Is that a camera? Get out of here! When choosing a thermal compound, you want to find something with low thermal resistance, that is, heat easily passes through it, something non-conductive and non-capacitive so you don't short out anything on your motherboard, and last but not least, something that doesn't dry out over time so that you don't lose performance a couple of years down the road when your system's still running and your thermal compound's still in there. We'll be using IC Diamond. This is my personal favorite thermal paste. Before you actually start a thermal compound swap, I would definitely recommend checking your temperatures because that way you'll be able to more easily diagnose if anything went wrong during the installation procedure. First step is to remove your existing heatsink, revealing the old thermal compound underneath. You'll need isopropyl alcohol, so you want to wet that onto a nice soft piece of, I use Charmin because it's awesome, and then you want to clean the surface of the CPU as well as the bottom of the heatsink. Now you'll notice that I'm not actually able to get it completely clean on the first go. This is because my wipe is now too dirty to clean anything. So I'm gonna find a clean spot, put on some more alcohol, and do another round with the isopropyl, trying to remove the residue that was left from the first time of cleaning it. So here we see our first pass and our second pass. For the third pass, I usually just use the toilet paper without putting any additional alcohol on it because we're trying to remove the little bits that are left behind, not leave any more, which is easier when they're wet. And then I usually finish off, and you're welcome to use something else, with just a quick pass with my sleeve or a microfiber cloth to remove any remaining residue that might be left behind by toilet paper because those little bits can cause cooling problems. And now you can see the surfaces are clean and ready to apply our new thermal compound. Back when CPUs didn't have integrated heat spreaders, we used to spread the thermal compound out across the die or the core in order to make sure that it covered the entire thing. Now that we put so much mounting pressure onto our heat spreaders, we can just put either a P-shaped blob in the middle or a rice grain shaped line in the middle and we can rely on the mounting pressure of the heat sink to actually spread the thermal compound. So these are known as the P and the line method. I personally find the line method has the best consistency for me, but everyone has a different experience and it varies depending on the thermal compound. The one thing to be aware of with the P and the line method is that if you have a bigger CPU, you're going to want to apply a bigger line of thermal compound or a bigger P in the middle. This is a 2011 CPU, whereas the one down here is an 1155 CPU. Now that we have a fresh application of thermal compound and two nice shiny clean surfaces to put together, we should be able to observe temperature improvements of anywhere from three to five degrees Celsius over the stock thermal compound when using an appropriate high performance thermal compound. Ah! Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode of As Fast As Possible on Tech Quickie. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe and also don't forget to hit that like button. It helps us out a lot. Share this video with anyone you think might benefit from it. And if you have any ideas for future episodes of Fast As Possible, click the link in the description of the video and leave us a suggestion. We will make sure to monitor it and hopefully you'll see your idea soon. See you guys again next time.